Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Friday Bible Study. I'm Pastor Tyrone. I have Pastor Mike with me. And today we will be continuing and do Psalms 134. But before we start, let us just surrender this to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful night to just be in your word. And we know, Lord, your word tells us where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst of us. And this is exactly where we want to be, in the midst of you, Lord. And we pray that you just help us, give us wisdom and understanding as we study your word. Anoint this word and everybody that's on here and bless those that will watch it in the future. And just let this just be a wonderful time in your word and study. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, Psalm 134, 134, verse 1. And it says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Comments. Comments. You know, this is about worship, you know, worshiping and praising the Lord. Um, we all know on this, all of us know that, you know, it is good to worship the Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. It's, it's good to be in his presence and feel his spirit. And, you know, and the Lord blesses us all. You know, we know we have trials and tribulations and things, but you know, God does it. It's all about love. And even in those things, there's love in those things. So we all come together every morning, every week, to just give God glory and to bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Any other comments? Yeah, uh, this is Steve. Uh, I want to comment on this verse right here. It's very interesting because it says, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Now, I've not done any heavy studying on this, but it stood out to me that it says by night. Yes. Remember, Jesus said, you know, we got to work while it's still day. And, you know, when we're in his presence, it's really easy to worship the Lord, right? It's, it's easy to worship and say praise the Lord when we're in church and his presence is strong. But what about when we don't feel him around when it's night, a spiritual night, and we're, we're, we feel like, are you there? And are we still worshiping him? Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. I was going to say it's um, worshiping God through the ups and downs, you know, not only through the good times, but through the hardships as well. Uh, it, Reminds me of the, the verse that says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And it's Amen. just worshiping God through every season in our lives. Amen. But through every battle, through every heartbreak, in every circumstance, praise the Lord. We worship the Lord. Amen. Just like the song. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Um, yeah, I was just thinking about, you know, praising the Lord during the day and at night. Did you get it? Um, during the, during joy and like Pastor Knight said, you know, during tribulation, which means night for me, you know, it's in the darkness, in the darkness, we praise the Lord and... No. Yeah, day and night. Amen. 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 Like the other song, worthy of it all, day and night, let Amen. incense arise. Amen. Let our prayers arise to God. Amen. Any other comments? No, still. Can't do that. That's frozen. Oh, I think Sister Joanna, Pastor Rupus can't hear us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
They're um, calling in Zoom. You want to give them a few minutes? Sure, yes. Pastor Knight? Yes, can you hear us? Oh, for some reason, my computer had frozen. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Well, what this verse reminded me of is the, um, there was a book uh, that I had read years ago called The Dark Night of the Soul. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what this reminds me of who by night stand in the house of the Lord. So we all have been through or are going through now or will go through again, a dark night of our soul. And that is when we need to stand in the house of the Lord and, and know that um, he's with us. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Yes, yeah, John, that's beautiful because, you know, I was just thinking about when we are going through the darkness and the tribulations and the trouble and the suffering, it is extremely difficult to thank God for, for those times. But when we do, we get the peace knowing that God will fix it and that joy comes in the morning. You know, the darkness will not last that too will pass and we just trust in the Lord in yeah through the night and and day so amen thank you and sometimes it's required to kind of in our journey to have a season to go to go through this like Job and and all the characters in the Bible they their lives are are examples for us I even Nebuchadnezzar, how God had to humble him and and bring him low, um, where he had to eat grass. Uh, but there's a reason and there's a season for that, um, and that that might be considered a dark night for him. Uh, but at the end, he realized his need for God, and God restored him. So praise the Lord that it's it's all God's work and, and he's Amen. doing a work. Amen. 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 Just think about what John the Baptist must have gone through. This mm -hmm. he came as a forerunner before Christ. So he went through such persecution and and you know, just he didn't, I mean, he knew that he was a forerunner before Christ, but Christ hasn't yet been crucified so you know the blood of the lamb didn't happen until long after john the baptist um, i don't know how long after but after john the baptist was executed so and then you think also about paul in prison in the dark night of his soul and so all of us it, there's there's examples of it all through scripture and, and that it, they are examples for us so that we will not lose hope uh, when we go through our dark night. Uh, Amen. Yes. Uh, and even, even now in this present time, that, that verse there for me is almost applicable at this very time time in, in the world, the things that are going on. Just look around and, and listen to some of the news of other countries and what's going on now. I'm not just talking about COVID. I'm talking about the violence and, and, and how people are so pointed against, div, div, divided in this world. It's almost like the sheep against the goats. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that may not be the wrong analogy, but it's, it's there's a lot of vision vision in the world, especially in, in this country, in America, who supposedly is a leading nation of the world uh, and God's holy nation. Yet there's so much going on around us, 
and so much rebellion. There's, there's lots of re rebellious people now um, that are doing things under the guise of demonstrating against the government. And yet, there's so much violence. There's so many murders going on. It's like I've never seen before. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, this world is growing darker by the minute. It's getting worse and worse. Um, the Holy Spirit is, really is being restrained. Um, but praise the Lord that he, he, he is the one protecting his children, um, even though the state of this world is, is just going worse. Um, praise the Lord that he puts a hedge of protection, like in Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And just praise the Lord that he, he's keeping us. Amen. Amen. And I just want to just agree with Pastor Rufus about what he was commenting about. You know, you're right, Pastor Rufus. It's just so much disrespect in this world. You know, we don't follow the rules anymore. The rules are just whatever you really want to do. We can see that in our country that, you know, all the things that were happening from years and years ago, people just don't regard them anymore. And um, the Bible tells us these things were going to happen. You know, brother against brother and sister and mother, and, you know, and we can see it. You know, we didn't ever think that this would happen, or we would see it anyway. But, you know, it's not surprising because it's been foretold. You know, which means we really need God more than ever now. Because to get through this, we have to be with the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, that's the only answer to any of this. It's just being with the Lord and praising him and blessing the Lord. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Ruth. In Revelation 19, verses 1 through 7a. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Again, they said, Alleluia. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Amen. 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 Any comments? God deserves all glory, honor, and praise. He's worthy of all of our praises. You know, that time is going to come when all will see the Lord. And he's going to return. We're waiting for that day, for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 
And that'll be our joy that comes in the morning. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wait. <laughs> so I pray for patience. Amen. Any other comments? Omnipotent, we have here. Mm -hmm. For the Lord God, omnipotent reigns. Omnipotent means all powerful. And there's another verse where it says omniscient, and, and God is also all knowing. So He's all powerful, all knowing. He knows all things uh, that are going on um, on or around us, but even within us too. He knows things in our hearts that we don't even know that are there. And yet, you know, he does this work in us where he brings us through the sanctification uh, to bring it all to the top. You know, the things that we don't see that are deep in our hearts and and he does this wonderful work of sanctification and and just taking taking anything that does not belong um, off from us, away from us. So thank you, Lord. And praise God. This is all his wonderful work. Amen. And we bless the Lord. Amen. 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 All powerful, all knowing. He knows the intents of everyone's hearts. He knows. Um, he knows. He knows it all. He knows, like what was mentioned earlier, the the sheep and the goats. He knows those that are truly His. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. He knows those that are with Him and those that are pretending. That's for sure, because He knows yeah. the heart. Amen. Any other comments? Well, there's one more pastor tonight. Omnipresent. Omnipresent, yes. Thank you, Pastor mm -hmm. Rufus. Always Amen. present. Thank you, Lord. Okay, verse two, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord, amen. 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 Lift up your hands. Any comments? The visualization of this, when we lift up our hands to God, whether it be through praise and worship, just lifting up our arms, our hands, or praying, if we have our palms up, it's, it's as if we're just receiving um, his spirit or, or even giving ourselves to him, like this openness, you know, we as if saying we want to feel your presence Lord you know or we're giving this to you Lord um, it's just a wonderful wonderful visual and and I feel like you know when we also lift up our hands it's as if it's also a way of just letting go letting Amen. letting everything just surrendering everything to the Lord and just giving it all to him no longer <laughs> being constrained and keeping it to ourselves, but it's like a form of just releasing it, whatever burden, whatever struggle it may be, just releasing it and giving it to the Lord. And um, also just wanting more of him too. I, I can also see like when we have our, our arms up, it's like reaching for him almost, like just wanting mm -hmm. more of him. Uh, There's so many ways to, um, Talk, go about this but 
That's what comes to mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, arms open, ready to receive him, surrendering everything. Amen. Yes. Everything within us. Yes. Just, just as Christ did on the cross, he surrendered himself. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, his I arms were stretched wide on the cross. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about surrender because, you know, you have your arms crossed, like you say, Pastor. On Nike, it's like you're not open to receive or to give. You're just closed up. But every time I lift up my arms, it's just like letting it go. It's just like I give up, Lord, you know, just take the burdens and and you go ahead and do it you know like give all the control to him and at the same time giving him the glory like you know you are god and all powerful always present can't hide from you so it's like here it is just take it so it's just a beautiful feeling when i do that you know and especially not just in praise you know when we are worshiping him it's when I am um, just so uptight and suffering. And I just lift up my arms and I say, just take it, Lord God, you know, my burdens. And yeah, the, the burden just comes off. And it's just a beautiful feeling. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Yes, it's like a roller coaster. It reminds me of riding a roller coaster. I mean, I haven't. <laughs> been on a roller coaster in a really long time but before when I would ride those really tall or um, high roller coasters and there's a drop uh, there's this tendency of like just trying to like just keep everything to yourself like there's this fear of putting your arms up you just want to be safe right um but I learned, you know, when I used to ride roller coasters that when I just put my arms up and, and let go, you know, there's the butterflies in your stomach, but it, it kind of, if it, it doesn't hurt as much as just keeping it in. <laughs> um, because if you're like going through the drop of the roller coaster, it kind of like, you still feel the butterflies, but it's like when you just put your arms up and let go, you just feel so much better. And I'm, for me in my case you know riding the a roller coaster it's like when you're you just have your arms up and just just let it go and it's actually really fun um but i can just see how that pertains to life as well like when when things come come our way you know how are we going to react are we going to just worry or keep it to ourselves or just let it go and give it to God and allow God to take over, allow God to lead everything, every, every aspect of our situation, allow his Holy Spirit to, to, to lead us and, and allow him to give us a calm spirit because there's this tendency to worry and, and fret and, and have anxiety. Um, but God wants us to just, Trust in him like a little child, you know, it says in the word that to enter the kingdom of God, we have to become as a, a little child and, and it's having that childlike faith in him. Um, so it just reminds me of that roller coaster, <laughs> just letting it go and, and just giving it to him. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's the perfect example, um, Pastor Nike, you know, like on, um, I think was a Wednesday, I just said something like, oh my goodness, I felt like I'm just um, hanging on, hung, hanging on by the hem of his garment, you know, in faith, like, okay, I give up, but I need to hold on to him. It, it's kind of like lifting up my arms to, to try to reach for that garment. And as long as I'm hanging on, you know, clinging to him, I know that I will be okay, no matter what. So, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, I like that roller coaster thing. It's just like, yeah, give up, just release and let go. He'll catch you. <laughs> yeah, amen. 
In Hebrews 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, and this applies to every situation, even though we may not see what God is doing at the moment. It's just having the faith, you know, even if we don't have the faith, it's asking God, Lord, give me the faith to trust in you and to know that you see the bigger picture. Uh, we may not understand now, but you know what's best and and we just trust in you. So when we lack the faith, we just say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And he hears that prayer. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I mean, like the roller coaster may not time. feel good at the moment, but <laughs> um, but it, it the release is worth it. Sorry, go ahead, Pastor Tyrone. Well, no, we just call it going with the flow, you know. Yes, yes. just putting your hands up, just surrendering it all, and just going with the flow. Whatever the spirit, whatever God's just taking you, you just write it out and go with it. And we know that. Um, that's the best. Amen. 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 And the, this verse I was it says. About that when you were talking about oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just saying I was thinking about that when you were talking about the roller coaster because you have to sit there and wait till it's over. <laughs> so you can either be tense and nervous and scared, or you can mm -hmm. just put your hands up and relax and just go with it. <laughs> you know, till it's over. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, this verse also says, uh, lift up your hands in the sanctuary. And, you know, the sanctuary is a holy place, but it's also God's dwelling place in our hearts. It's um, lift up the hands, your hands in the sanctuary. It's like from our heart, flows um it just really comes from the heart you know what if it's it's really for the lord and and it says bless the lord it says lift up your hands and bless the lord it, it doesn't say bless the lord when x y and z happens or when good things happens no like bless the lord in every season even through the difficulties it's saying bless the lord and um, you may not feel good at the moment, but it, it's just, again, God knows, God knows what's best for us and, and he really deserves all our praises, whether we feel him or not. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Yes, I was just reminded of something from our prayer call. He is worthy of our praise. <laughs> Mother mm -hmm. Couch likes to say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's a worshiper for sure. <laughs> she is. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In 1 Timothy 2, verse 8 says, I desire, therefore, that all pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Amen. Amen. This is honestly easier said than done. <laughs> because there are times <laughs> where, where, you know, so sometimes we we feel wrath for <laughs> for others, you know, when the flesh rises up, and sometimes we feel doubt too. We doubt what God is doing, and um, you know, it really takes, or it really we really need God's help to not doubt and not 
walk in the flesh because we all we all have flesh and you know it says in the word no one is good even jesus says no one is good but one and that is god um none of us are perfect <laughs> um but yeah god, god knows and and it's it's all part of his work amen 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 You know, the words tells us to do things and really truly know that we cannot do without God. You know, we, we can try on our own strength, but you know, it's not going to work. So we do truly have to have God's help in all the things, Amen. in all things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Yes. Uh, I want to comment to what Pastor Knight said about Christ when he said there's no one good but the Father. You would think he's, he's sensing the urge of the flesh in him, the fleshly part of him that's allowing him to know that there's something in him. So he, he had the faith to get past it. He, he, he could sense it was there. And so mm -hmm. he could he could say without doubt, there's no one good but the Father, because he, he knew that the flesh had that urge in him, that, that sinfulness, that an inclination to to not be good, uh, go the, the way of the flesh. Uh, I know I do. And and I that's why I need God and I and uh and, uh, and that's what he reminds me, how much I need him. That's how he reminds me how much I need him. Um, so. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, we all, we all need God. We, we all need him. Apart from him, we can do nothing. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? In Psalm 63, verse 4. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. Amen. Amen. This is also like the song, to worship you, I live, to worship you, I live, I live to worship you. And you, amen. It's just so wonderful. It's like with every breath and every part of our being, you know, we just praise and bless the Lord while we live. And even when we die and, and, and spend eternity with him, we're going to be praising him and blessing him for eternity. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's just so wonderful and so exciting, like all uh, different multitudes and tribes and tongues, they're all going to be worshiping the Lord in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we can do Amen. that now. Amen. <laughs> we can do this now. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I love hearing praise and worship songs, especially at work, you know, it, it, when things get so busy. Um, just, I love how Latanya and I, we listen to the praise and worship in, in our office and, and we listen to like the same thing. Um, she plays gospel music, but it's like the gospel music that I like, you know. Um, but even when I'm walking around campus, I have my earphone, one earphone on, the other ear open so I can hear what's going on around me. But um, when I'm walking, I also listen to worship. And, and it's just something about worship. You know, there's a verse that says, um, you know, I think in Isaiah, that for a heavy heart, you know, there's praise and worship 
for for a heavy heart and and it's very uplifting you know hearing praise and worship it really also sets the atmosphere around you too um when you pray praise and worship it kind of when we're just speaking god's promises and singing his pray praises to him it's like it kind of sets like all these works of darkness um away and just praise god that we have we have this form of worship and just saying praise to him amen 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 any other comments um yeah i you know where we all are in our in our walk with the lord we we want to lift up our arms and praise him and bless him there are people out there in the world that don't even notice him yes that's the first step is to notice that god is god and mm -hmm. um and so it seems that in our the way we live our lives if we could draw people close to the lord so at the first step that they would take that first step in noticing him and um and then grow from there i mean that's kind of a hard thing but i remember even myself um that, that first step of taking notice that oh wow yes god is god and i i notice him but it took me a while to be able to um just to really get to the point of praising and lifting up my hands to worship him um you know because sometimes we look uh, uh, at our circumstances and we don't see things to praise him about what we what we are learning is that even in our dark night of the soul as we talked about earlier he gives us reason to we want to bless his name and to lift up our hands and worship to him. Uh, a lot of times it's because of the conflict in our lives. We have come to know him. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yes. He, um, he brings us through and, and that's... That's how he teaches us him, uh, of himself when he brings us through these trials uh, or even giving us the trials. I mean, uh, once we know and once we see that it is God who brought us through these, brings us through these things. And so, so um, then we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And, and uh, it's just, it's a good feeling when, when you have that experience. And, and, and sometimes God has to give us opportunities to get that experience. And that's what his trials is all about. That's how he teaches us. And um, yes, it's the Lord for that. It's Amen. important ways. Amen. And you know, like Sister Joanna was saying, you know, none of us seek God when everything is going good. Not even people in the world, you know. You know, my my prayer callers, when they call, it's because their life has changed considerably from what was going on to now. And they realize they need God to help them with it, you know. And I think we are the same. I mean, the Bible tells us nobody seeks after him. And and we know that when life is good and everything's going great and and we're happy and going around that God is probably the last thing on our minds. But when trouble happens and persecution comes and and trials and tribulations start to flare up, you know, and we know that we of ourselves cannot do anything, that we need someone to help us and save us, you know, then we call upon the name of the Lord because he's the only one that can do it. Amen. 
Any other comments? Okay, verse three. It says, the Lord who made heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Amen. Amen. Any comments? The Lord who made heaven and earth is just so, so amazing. You know, the Lord who made the universe, the galaxy, knows every, every detail, every bit of us, you know, every strand of our hair um, on our head. Well, I know Uncle Tyrone. I, he, he sees your heart <laughs> and, you know, have hair on your head but just kidding but I'm just, but um, <laughs> um but yeah it's just so like the song who am I that the lord of all the earth would care to know my name and would knows everything that's going on with us and and knows everyone to everything that's going on in the lives of the people around us. And it's just so amazing how, how God knows it all. And it says here, the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. And Zion is a spiritual place of grace, being in, in grace. And, and Jesus Christ is the one who grants that grace to each and every one of us. So praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. He, he truly is worthy, worthy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any other comments? Uh, yes. The, the, the real <clears throat> lesson of that verse is that it is not ironic that the Lord who made heaven and earth bless us from Zion, because he doesn't value that heaven and earth no more than he values us. And that's that's the blessing right there. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Because we are, we are worth much to him as did all creation, each one of us. And that's an amazing thing. Sometimes it's hard to, to really conceive that. How could that be? Lord, why, why all of these things that you've made and and you are, and you love me. And, and, but and that and it's amazing to just just kind of put that in your brain, and you know how he can just love you equal to everything else. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How great is his love for us? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Any other comments? Psalm 14, verse 7. Oh, that salvation of Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord brings back the captivity of his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Amen. Amen. And this is speaking of spiritual Israel, which is us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Okay. Any other comments? This was another short psalm, three verses. Uh, but thank you all for your comments. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. God bless everyone. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless, God bless you all. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.